All these hooligans in this polluted room again. I got bars. <laughs> What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again. And I want to say, first of all, thank you for 70,000 subscribers. That is amazing. It is enabling me to make more and more content. And I hope that I can do that to the best of my ability and serve you all the very best content revolving around cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency mining, as well as some tech thrown in for good measure, because why not? Before we get into it today, no sponsorships, but if you want to support the channel as well as get access to the privately hosted Rocket Chat, you can hit the join button down below and then head over to the membership tab and click the down arrow to find the secret registration URL under the connecting on social media tab. All right, so that's out of the way and everybody is asking, of course, why are profits down on mining specifically as it pertains to, of course, Ethereum? And the answer is pretty simple right off the bat. We had a big dump and because all of the Ethereum was liquidated as opposed to new money coming into the network, essentially there's not as many transactions on the network for the miners to process. That along with the increase in difficulty, which is measured by the amount of people actually trying to mine Ethereum, means that your revenue is gonna go down. And this is a problem that has existed forever in cryptocurrency, and I also don't see it as a big doom and gloom situation or scenario because frankly if you aren't okay with these types of profits i come on you, it's it's ridiculous like if you're not okay with these types of profits that are a little bit lower then i don't know why you got into the game in the first place because like i've said before this is a long game that's why i bought my gpus when the mining profitability was lower and this is also why I tell you guys not to buy graphics cards right now. It's not a smart idea because things like this are going to happen. It's not a consistent source of income. It's not a consistent revenue source. It is very volatile and goes up and down depending on multiple factors, including price of Ethereum and difficulty on the network, as well as how many just transactions are being executed per block. And that specifically relates to, of course, Ethereum, because the transactions or the transaction fees are a large portion of the miner's income. Hence why there's such a big hubbub around EIP 1559 and burning some of those fees off. All right, so we have some documentation up here. I guess not really documentation. We have Ethermine up here with the last few payouts and I wanted to show you guys a clear example of what happened so you guys can kind of see it for yourselves. On Monday, February 22nd, we had a dip in the price of Ethereum. A lot of people appeared to hold on to it on Monday and you can kind of see Sunday was a little bit higher right we had some good trading on saturday and sunday a lot of that was money coming out of the network which caused the dive in price on monday everything stayed kind of dormant on monday people were kind of trying to feel out the market that's why you see a lower revenue on monday and then boom on tuesday a huge increase in mining profitability the hash rate has not changed here on this farm why did this happen well Obviously, in this case, what was happening is money was coming out of the network. So if you guys see a huge increase in the amount of ETH you've earned, you need to start asking yourself the question of why. And the answer will basically determine what's going to happen next. If it is new money coming into the network, you can start to plan on basically being able to mine more amount of ETH over the next few days than you had been previously. On the flip side of that, if it's money coming out and transactions liquidating ETH into other cryptocurrencies or fiat, then you need to prepare yourself for lower mining profits over the next few days. This case is obviously the latter. As you see, Wednesday we steadily decreased. More people were dumping though, so it wasn't a terrible day. And then Thursday decreased a little bit more, kind of back to equilibrium. And then of course, on Friday, February 26th, we started seeing 
the consequence of not as much Ethereum being transacted on the network. And we started dipping in, of course, our mining revenue. What should you do if you basically see money coming out of the network on uh, any given day? If you're a miner, I think at least home miners, you wanna start considering what type of pool payout method is going on on your current pool and consider swapping. This is because essentially if you can swap to a pool that pays out at least a portion of the fees or the block reward at least, based on your hash power without taking into consideration as much luck, you're gonna have a much better time. An example of this would be a pool that uses PPS plus as opposed to PPLNS. PPLNS, when there are a lot of transactions going on on the network is clearly going to be better, especially if the gas fees are high because that amount of luck may just pay you out a lot more for, at any given time. But once you start going into that bear market, you really want a more consistent pool. That's why I swapped to Hivon pool. And as you can see here, on February 28th at 1.23 a.m., we had a payout of 0.25. Now, the reason for this is basically because, A, we already had a little bit in there, so it's probably a little bit less than that. And then B, uh, of course, we are on PPS Plus with Hive on Pool, and therefore we get that block reward no matter what, whether or not the pool finds a block. Now, PPS Plus, if you guys have more questions, we have a whole video on mining pool payout methods. I highly recommend it. It's a good watch and will help you kind of make these decisions. Another problem though, of course, with pool hopping in general is that especially with PPLNS, something like Ethermine, you are going to have that last end share issue. So if you haven't been mining the Ethermine for a while and you come back, it's gonna take a little bit for the profits to kind of build back up because essentially there's a limited amount of shares. So you just need to keep that in mind. Don't pull hop too much, but if you see like, for example, a huge crazy increase in your mining profitability, and then you go and take a look at the network and you realize that a lot of the money is coming out of the network, it may be time to go to PPS plus. All right, so as you guys can see here, as far as profitability, just to demonstrate prices going down, difficulties going up. More miners are coming on the network, that means more competition for you. Price is going down, that means profitability is going down. So with an increase in difficulty and a decrease in price, your profitability on whatever hash rate you have is going to go down. There's no way around it outside of, of course, taking into consideration the pool payout method types, as well as possibly moving to different coins, which we will also talk about. So. Here we go. As you guys can see, I have the Etherscan pulled up for the previous blocks that have been being mined. We have our average gas prices and then we have the rewards. The base reward for Ethereum is two and then everything on top of that is fees. So you take a block like the one that just happened here 38 seconds ago, we had 1.01 .01 ETH in fees, and then of course we had the two of the base block reward. As you can see, scrolling down, they have all stayed under four ETH. Alrighty, so now that we understand that essentially the block reward is low, what you also wanna take a look at is why, and if you go to transactions, you can kind of see here that the transactions are pretty low. We're not having a lot of big transactions. Most of them are a couple ETH or even below uh, one ETH at this point. Because of that, obviously you can tell that no big whales are making any big moves, which means that the fees are staying low. The good news is if, if you have any Ethereum that you're holding right now and you wanted to swap in or start playing with Uniswap and that sort of thing, you can start doing that without having to have a lot of money, which is cool. Uh, but if you are mining, of course, you are going to also not be getting as many fees. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. 
All right, so let's talk about other coins and the possibility of making additional money outside of mining Ethereum. One of the big problems right now is that most of the competition can't actually support a large amount of hash. And what I've done is pull up Cortex mining profit calculator here to give you guys an idea. And 1.8 GPS is uh, basically going to be a single RX 5700. As you can see, it would make 235 a day. That sounds great. It's actually super competitive with Ethereum at this time. However, if you look at the price of 17 cents, and you look at the total block reward of $1.19, and that is basically calculated off of the fact that a block is a seven reward, and then at the price of 17 cents, it means that you're getting $1.19. Now, it's every 13 seconds, but if you did some quick math, like let's just say, I don't know, 60 seconds divided by 13 equals 4.6. So if we did 4.6 times, of course that's going to be a dollar 19. it's only generating five dollars and 49 cents every minute obviously if we did times 60 that would give us 329 dollars every hour and then times 24 that would give us seven thousand nine hundred and eight dollars every 24 hours Mind you, that is the total and complete amount of new money coming into the network that the network is providing via mining. That's not enough to support all the miners coming off of Ethereum. Yes, the difficulty is low right now. Yes, the profitability looks good. But if like, let's say even just everybody that watched this channel moved to Cortex, you wouldn't be making any money. Nobody would. This is the this is as much as they're going to be able to disperse out to everybody per day based on their current price and block reward. So I wanted to clear that up because people keep asking me about Cortex. Another issue with Cortex is that their main exchange is Binance and Binance due to the instability of the network has turned off deposits so even if you were one of the couple miners that goes to go mine cortex you're going to have to use a random less known exchange and then because binance has shut it down because of instability of the network you're taking a big chance that those exchanges are even going to work plus they're older styles meaning you got to put in a sell order and then you have to wait for somebody to buy that sell order so if trading is not very high on that particular exchange for that particular coin you're kind of sol so is cortex mining really viable right now probably not outside of maybe like hedge mining with a couple gpus in your gaming rigs all right, so I hope that covers why your mining profitabilities are lower. I also want to basically clarify that it's still very profitable. You're still be, you're still making money. If you know it seemed like we were doing super well and you thought that was going to continue, you know, look, that's the game. It's been the game since since the start of this whole thing, and uh, there's not much you can do about it other than try to make the best decisions you can as far as what pool you're mining to at a given time as well as you know how to protect whatever money you are generating or crypto you are generating by either putting it in different cryptocurrencies or pulling it to fiat and putting it in different investments real estate whatever it may be you need to learn to bob and weave all right and if you can't do that then like it's it's a tough thing to say but like it, it just might not be the game for you and that's okay that's not a bad thing especially like right now you need to consider that like gpus are selling for a lot if you just need to get your money and get out then that's not the worst thing in the world if you want to participate and you enjoy the game then let's go ahead and do it hit the sub button hit the notification bell and we'll all learn together i'll see you next tuesday if you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.